Size doesn't matter. I know a few of you guys have heard that at some point in your life, most likely from your wife. Well, there's other reasons for her to love you, and while she's stuck in that relationship with you, she's got to make the best of it, and she's got to try and protect your delicate feelings. Welcome in, guys. Jim here once again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the smallest flippers out there on the market today, and a really nicely made, high-quality one at that. As a matter of fact, this is a custom knife. This is the Kutsu, which is a collaboration between Greg Geckel at Quest Custom Knives and Garrett at GTO Design. Now, I've had a chance to review a knife of Greg's in the past, and that was the Gentleman Spear Point Flipper. I'll bring that out later as a comparison against this. And I've loved his work. I love that knife. I carry it often. And this is one that I'm really glad to see that he got involved in. This particular design's been around for a couple of years now in different iterations and done by different makers. And uh, Garrett, if you don't know him, you can follow him on Instagram. It's at GTO underscore design. And what Garrett's done is created a fistful of awesomeness. This tiny, tiny, tiny little knife that still sports a quarter inch thick blade. Now, while it sounds ridiculous to say that the blade is only two inches long and it's a quarter inches thick, it might sound like it's a bit unwieldy. However, because of the really, really thin titanium scales on here, it doesn't make it any thicker than a standard knife. And that's what makes this thing so great, that and the fact that it's got an incredible action. Listen, a lot of guys have tried to make super teeny tiny little folders and flippers and some work and some don't. It's just, it's a hard thing when you miniaturize it so much to be able to get the right action and the right lock up and the right lock bar tension on such a short little lock bar. Luckily, there's plenty of relief cut in this one, so it's not unbelievably strong. This is just a great all-around little knife. Now, let's talk about the specifications, then we'll go through the packaging and talk about the knife itself. So, let's get this bad boy open and lay it out. What you're looking at here is a closed length, so I'll close it back up for demonstrative purposes, a closed length of only three inches. So, that means when this is in your pocket, it's only taking up three inches of depth, and that's fantastic. The overall length when it's open is still only five inches. So, you have a two inch blade that is a quarter inch in thickness. What I love about that is it gives a little bit of heft to it, but it also really creates a dramatic look when you look at how deep that hollow grind is, going from this really thick blade stock all the way down to the cutting edge. It really gives it a very seriously dramatic look. And there have been slightly larger iterations of the Kutsu in the past. This is the Kutsu 2.2. And the 2.2 gives you the speed hole pattern that you would see in the Quest Knives Gentleman Spear Point Flipper and in the Tanto Flipper. So you can definitely see the, uh, I guess the influence is the best word to use, the best inf uh, the, the influence that, uh, that Greg brought into this design. I also love the custom pivot on this as well. It's not seen, at least from what I can recall, on the older versions of this knife. I've seen this knife run around in different iterations for at least two years, and I really got attracted to it immediately. As a matter of fact, I still remember sending uh, Garrett a message when these were first coming out a couple years ago going, dude, that thing is incredible. Um, I'm going to do what I can to get my hands on one. And it just never worked out. I was never spending money at the time when there was a current run. And I don't really ever see people flipping these and selling them. So I've never gotten my hands on one. Then I got a chance at a show, I believe it was probably the Blade Show uh, a couple of years ago, to actually handle one. I was like, holy shit, this thing really is cool. Yes, it's super, super tiny, but it really fits the hand well, and uh, I liked everything about it. Then last year in October, or actually it was November, when I uh, first met Greg in person at the New York Custom Knife Show, that was where I got this one, I got to handle this. Uh, it was the 2.1 version, I believe. 
and I really dug it. I thought it was just cool as shit. There's something about holding this in your hand. If it was any skinnier, uh, I don't think it would be as attractive to me. I think it really is the perfect balance of the small compact size and the very, very thick blade. Let, let's talk about the, uh, the size here for a second. Let's put it up against a what I consider to be on the smaller side of EDC knives. This is my Rockstead Shin. You guys have seen this on my channel for over four years. Um, it's still a constant favorite of mine, one of, the, uh, one of the best knives I've ever owned. But it's on the small end of the spectrum when you're looking at a, uh, at a compact folder. And when you look at this, you'll notice that, yes, while this has a monster quarter-inch thick blade, uh, and this certainly doesn't, as far as the carryability, it's just about the same. So I'm not going to feel any more encumbered by the thickness of that blade than I would with the overall thickness of this knife because they've kept the titanium sides excuse me very very slim and when we put it up against a common sized EDC knife like my uh, Mokutai Dominator by Daryl Ralph you see just how much more compact this really is matter of fact the open length of this is the same as the closed length of my dominator. So what I've got here, as I mentioned before, is a fistful of awesomeness. There's a big difference here in carrying these two. This is obviously significantly heavier. This is all Mokutai and Stellite 6K. While this, being so much smaller, even though there's similar materials, because uh, Mokutai is basically just uh, different types of titanium made into a Damascus, this is all titanium. You're looking at CPM 154. There's no real weight difference between CPM 154 and Stellite 6K. But the fact that it's so much smaller makes it easier to carry. As a matter of fact, you could just take these two screws off of here, take the clip off, and carry this as a true pocket knife by just dropping it down inside of your pocket if you're looking for something tiny. And nowadays with so many... Uh, Man, the, the knife world has turned into just a myriad of ticky-tacky. Everybody's making the same shit out of the same materials. And uh, for the most part, when you really, really look, not as a collector, but as somebody who's just coming into this, and you're looking at all the different websites that are out there, and all the Instagram posts, and all the Facebook posts, and you're being inundated with knife after knife after knife when you don't really know one from the other, a lot of stuff starts to look the same after a while. So this is kind of a breath of fresh air. Yes, there is an absolute popular segment for micro-sized folders and flippers, but very few are done well. This one is done well. Let's talk about what you're getting. When you open up the packaging, when you first get it, you realize, okay, I'm buying a custom knife. I'm not buying a production knife. It's not in a production box with a production label. You know that you're buying a custom knife. That's always nice. You get into it, and you get a very simple certificate of authenticity. Here it lists the design, the length, the closed length, the blade length, which, by the way, is still, yes, only two inches. That's insane. Blade material, and then the scale material, 6AL4V titanium, and... The maker is Greg Geckel in collaboration with Garrett at GTO Design. So you've got that certificate there. It doesn't really mean a lot for most people, but it's nice to have the feeling of, you know what, I spent a lot of money. Somebody took the time to at least put a little bit of effort into their packaging. I like having it, it's, especially if you're trading it or you're selling it down the line. The first question somebody asks you is, does it have the original packaging and does it have a certificate of authenticity? And sometimes it's hard to tell somebody, well, it just came in a zippered pouch and there was no certificates or anything and you're just buying the knife, man. You know what the knife is, come on. But some people do get overly picky. If you've ever sold on a forum, you know how ridiculous it gets. They ask for 300 different photographs from every different angle, and they, uh, what's the certificate that comes with it? Does it come with the original tactical peanuts in the box? And it, it's ridiculous. So it is nice to have those things included. One of the things that I really love about this design is how deep this choil goes and how the flipper tab extends beyond that to kind of hook your finger in. 
even though you really only have two, maybe three fingers for a grip on this handle, it feels really secure. You'll also notice that the blade dips down right here before it starts coming back up, and that's for your thumb. Everything about this knife feels good for its size. You've got cage bearings riding on heat treated washers, so you have the heat treated steel washers so that the bearings don't uh, obviously bore a track into the softer titanium. You've got a patent pending design, which means you're not going to see a whole bunch of different people making a knife that looks like this. The pivot screws titanium. Oh, yeah. Just listen to that thing. Oh. It flips like crazy. And everything is built well. There you've got good early lockup, but it's substantial lockup. You've got good contact between the lock bar and the steel. And the detent, did you hear that? Let's do that again. Very, very, very solid. Now the thing with the 2.2, unlike previous versions, is they're not available at dealers. You can only get them if you buy direct from Quest Custom Knives. And in the description below, I'll give you a link directly to Greg's website where you can order them. The lead time is somewhere around a month, uh, anywhere from a week to a month, depending on when, the, when you're ordering, if it falls within the time they're doing their run. They're 500 bucks. Now, I'm going to put it out there right now. 500 bucks is not cheap. But what I don't want you to fall into the mindset of, well, it's a tiny knife. It shouldn't be, only, it shouldn't be $500. The size of the knife does not dictate how much it costs. You're spending the same amount of money for either one of these. In the ballpark, anyway. You're getting the same level of quality. You're getting the same workmanship. You're getting the same materials. This just happens to be smaller. However, uh, it is thicker blade stock, so it is uh, slightly more expensive to buy in, uh, in the thicker sheets. So what you're getting here is something that's unique, that honestly is very, very fun. Um, I, I can't stop playing with this thing. I really, really can't. And it just rockets open. The one warning I'll give you, uh, because of how confined the space is here, it's a very, very small knife with a very strong detent. Once you get the knife unlocked and you try to get the blade past that detent stop, so that's where the detent is as it's closing. When you're unlocking it, you have a large flipper tab, which you need to you need to have a large flipper tab in order to engage it properly. Notice it doesn't stick out much, but it's it's still got you know a good size to it. When you're unlocking it, you're bringing it down. It comes to your thumbnail, and you're kind of tempted because you want to break past that detent to keep pushing the lock bar. This can happen, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is one of the sharpest blades. Uh, that you can imagine. It is ridiculously sharp. So just keep your eye on that. Once you feel it break past that TT tint, just get your thumb out of the way. Uh, it is actually very smooth. It doesn't have a long travel, but it is very smooth. So it will drop down on your thumb like a fucking guillotine. Keep that in mind. That is my one and only, and it's not really a complaint, it's just worth pointing out. It's, it's the one noteworthy thing I wanted to point out in this video. Let's get a nice close-up look at it. Nice polished edge on there. I love how dramatic it looks from this angle. That's why you'll notice in the photography that I did at the beginning of the video, I wanted to highlight that because seeing that hollow grind there from such a thick blade stock uh, looks really, really cool. There's the custom pivot. Beautifully machined titanium, where they do a nice bead blast on the main portion, then they go back, Greg goes back and does a satin finish across the high spots. Very thick backspacer. I believe it's just a G10 backspacer. Uh, I forgot to ask Greg, but I'm very, very certain that's just black G10. They even took the time to put a nice custom clip on here. This is not a basic, cheap little spring clip. They actually did a nice job designing a, uh, a titanium clip on there. I think it's a really, really cool idea. 
And there you see the uh, GTO and uh, Greg's logo back there. Super slick, super cool. And when I posted pictures a few days ago on my Instagram, people were going nuts. They're like, holy shit, that is the coolest little fucking knife. And that's the exact reaction that you're always going to get if you show this knife to somebody. Because it is different, it is cool, and it's, it's fat, and it's stubby, and it's thick, and it's just crazy cool. And when you flip it and you feel that action, you keep thinking to yourself, you know, for, for such a tiny little flipper, I wouldn't expect it to be so fast and so smooth, but yet it is. So Greg did a fantastic job on uh, making each and every one of these. And, and please remember, if you go to order one and you're told, okay, it's going to be two weeks or a month or, you know, two months, remember, this is, a, this is a custom knife that you're buying. It's not, you know, being spit out of a machine and then screwed together by 35 people in a big, uh, big warehouse and, and sent out in, uh, in mass quantities. So there may be a little weight associated, but don't let that discourage you. Because it's still a lot less than, you know, most of the stuff that I show you guys here on my channel. And for 500 bucks, I mean, think about it. You could spend 500 bucks on a good quality uh, mid-tech, big giant mid-tech knife um, that's pretty basic, that looks like everybody else's knife. Or you can get into a custom-made knife and you can dictate your finishes. You can do different anodized colors on the frames. They're offering Damascus bladed versions, obviously for a higher price. Um, you can get just the screws done in anodized for just a little pop of color. You can have the clip anodized, you can have acid etch blades, stone wash blades, all kinds of different options. So it's nice to be able to say, hey, I'm going to spend a few hundred bucks on my next knife and be able to dictate the way you have it made. When you buy a Benchmade, it's whatever variations they've chosen to make, or a cold steel, or a, you know whatever production knife that you're used to buying. Spider Co., whatever it is, you're used to, you can always select from whatever they're offering you. You can't call up Spider Co. and say, hey, uh, I, I'd like to buy a Delica with an M4 blade, and can you put titanium hardware in there and, and uh, anodize it? They're going to go, uh, no, what number are you calling? Because we don't do that shit. I don't know if that's the exact answer you'll get, but that's the way it is with production knives. And for 500 bucks, you're getting, it's hard to really compare it to other custom knives because there are very few custom flippers that are available for $500. Go out there and look. Brand new, not used or anything like that, uh, but even then you're going to have a hard time. There's just not many out there. So when somebody says, hey, I want a good custom flipper, what do I expect to spend? I tell people you're, you're starting at around five, five fifty, dollars but you're very rapidly moving up if you want something that's uh, fairly decent. So to be able to say I'm getting a custom knife for 500 bucks, I'm getting a unique design that isn't really rampant out there. There are a lot of designs that really do follow along the lines of what other makers make. With this, you've got something a little different. And the fact of the matter is, there's something so cool about having a knife like this that feels this tough with this, this thick quarter-inch steel blade that fits and conceals in a closed fist. How crazy is that? And yeah, playing with it is a little bit addictive. It, it's fun. Of course, that's half the reason most of us buy flippers anyway instead of a standard folder. There's just something fun about flipping it. So uh, maybe don't spend 500 bucks on a fidget spinner. Spend five. Oh, look, it spins too. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now you've got a fidget spinner and a knife. How about that shit? Right? No? Doesn't, doesn't really work that way? Okay. So maybe instead of spending 500 bucks on a fidget spinner, spend 500 bucks on a cool custom knife uh, that you can sit there and flick and play with in, in the same manner. That's, that's the way I look at it. Either way, I think it's a solid investment. I enjoy it. I think the craftsmanship is nice. It's a simple, clean design. It's not overdone. There's nothing particularly tricky done here that you could say, well, this knife has this feature that no other knife in the world has. No, not at all. It's a simple, basic frame lock. However, it's done nicely. It's done with nice finishing, and it's made exceedingly well. There's no blade play in any direction. Let's get it flipped back open for the uh, lock. Notice here the lock, nice and solid. It just, everything is built 
the way that you would expect a $500 knife to be built, period. It's just nice to be able to say that sometimes. So there you have it, guys. Uh, that is my overall look at the... Uh, yeah, I just, I just think it's funny that it fucking spins. All right, that's my look at the GTO Design and Quest Custom Knives Kutsu 2.2. If you have any questions, throw them down in the uh, comments section down below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next video.